Local 4 News starts now with a breaking news alert. And that breaking news could end up changing the downtown landscape for years to come. General Motors says it plans to move its global headquarters out of the iconic Rensen. The company plans to move down Woodward Avenue to the soon to be Hudson's Detroit, which is still under construction right now. Thanks for joining us. I'm Demond Fernandez and for Devin Skilly. And I'm Kimberly Gill. That move was made official at a news conference that just wrapped up just a few minutes ago, and it raises a lot of questions, mainly what will become of the Rensen and the towers that signify the city's skyline. Business editor Rod Maloney is live on this story for us today. Rod, uh, what more can you tell us about this? Well, essentially what we have here is a complete shuffling of the, the, the monopoly board, if you will, here in the city of Detroit. Uh, first of all, they've got a new name for the, the Hudson site. They call it Hudson's Detroit. And let's take a look up at the tower here. You're, you're seeing the office tower, which Dan Gilbert just said is essentially constructed as a headquarters. And then you can see also the, off, the, the, the tower, the actual uh, living quarters and the, and the restaurants and the like, they're gonna be in the taller tower. General Motors, of course, is gonna make its headquarters here. That's a massive shift, considering it was back in 1996 that GM announced that it was buying the Ford-built Renaissance Center back then. So here's the video of the Rensen, and I was there back in, uh, it was uh, 1996, it was May, uh, May, I think it was 17th, and they, it, it, it stunned Detroit then that they announced that they were buying the Rensen. And since then, after spending $75 million to buy it, which was pennies on the dollar, they put a billion dollars into it. But since the COVID uh, pandemic and the like, they're down to just 2,500 or so employees downtown here. They've moved the marketing and the sales group up to the tech center in Warren. So they, they haven't really been using the Rensen to its capacity, and that's a problem for them. It's expensive to run, too. So what do they do? Well, they move over here to Hudson's Detroit. Dan Gilbert apparently pitched this a while back. Mayor Duggan talked about that, saying that he told them that they needed a new headquarters, even though they didn't know they needed a new headquarters. So let's hear from the press conference and what was said here just a few moments ago. We'll explore new ideas for the complex, including the possibilities for commercial or residential or mixed use. And we're grateful for the collaboration with a visionary like Dan, who has let, had such an impact on the resurgence of downtown Detroit in recent years. And for GM, Hudson's Detroit is a perfect fit. Today I could not be more pleased to welcome General Motors to Hudson's Detroit. Hudson's is perfect for GM. It was designed and built to, close, to house a global headquarters. The building will have it all. State-of-the-art exhibition and meeting spaces, luxury hotel, living amenities, exciting restaurants and bars, and destination shopping. Now, Gilbert will be able to finance that tower. Um, obviously, that's a very expensive. They say a billion and a half dollars to build that thing. So now he'll be able to fill that up, finance it, and get money out of it. That's a good thing for him. And so what you heard there, Jim Bieri, who is a real estate analyst here in Detroit, basically explaining how and why this all happens. Dan Gilbert needed somebody to be the anchor tenant here. They now have General Motors. Dan Gilbert also is an expert at knowing what to do with giant buildings like the Rensen. There's talk that maybe you could turn it into uh, partial living space. You could maybe get something else in there uh, that we don't really see right now. But the bottom line is it's this massive shift because essentially the world has changed uh, in many, many ways since back in the time when General Motors bought the rents. And so, so much to talk about. And we'll take a look more closely at this coming up on Local 4 News at 6. So reporting live downtown, Rod Malone. Yeah. Local Big 4. news coming out of downtown Detroit. Rod, we appreciate it. As Rod said, you can expect more on this story on clickondetroit.com. That's where you can find out everything we know about GM's move from the Rensen. Plus, tonight at 11, we're hearing from urban planners about what a reimagined Rensen could mean for the city and whether the iconic tower should stay standing. Now to the big event that's starting to take over the city. Live pictures right now as that huge structure goes up for next week's NFL draft. Now, if you work downtown, chances are your commute was impacted by the latest phase of road closures connected to the NFL draft. Those road closures began today, impacting the Lodge, Jefferson Avenue, and a whole bunch of streets surrounding the downtown core. Will Jones is live. Will, getting around, not going to be easy from here on out. 
Definitely not. I'm standing on Jefferson Avenue and normally around this time it will be bumper to bumper traffic because of rush hour, but this road is shut down due to the NFL draft. This closure and other closures are going to be making getting around downtown a challenge. Detroit is preparing to be in the national spotlight for the NFL draft. The city is leaving no stone unturned for the hundreds of thousands of tourists the draft is expected to attract. Where are you guys going? And as preparations shift into high gear, there are more road closures. And what was it like for you coming in this morning? Torture. Phase three of road closures began at midnight, and this is the biggest phase yet. It's all listed here on your screen. The lodge exit to Jefferson Avenue downtown is closed, and westbound Jefferson is shut down from Bobian to Washington, and eastbound Jefferson from Washington to Randolph. Bates Street from Jefferson to Atwater, Atwater from Civic Center Drive to Bates, and finally southbound brush between Larnett and Jefferson is also closed to traffic. This is in addition to the first two phases of closures, which are still in effect. There's a lot of Canadians that work in Detroit and go back to Windsor through the tunnel. And I can't even imagine what this is gonna look like with only one lane coming this way. So bottom line, if you're planning to spend any time downtown over the next few weeks, be prepared for delays. This is only temporary, so I just know to leave out earlier and it'll be fine. Are you excited to have the draft in Detroit? Oh my goodness, overly excited. I am super excited. The draft is over on April 27th, but those closures will remain into effect through early May. That's because it's going to take time to deconstruct everything. We're live on Jefferson Avenue. Will Jones, Local 4. Sure to be an exciting time. Okay, Will, we appreciate that update. Well, tonight we're getting our first look at body camera video of a deadly police shooting in Warren. Yeah, it happened Friday outside of a home, and police say they're releasing this video in an effort to be transparent. Sean Lay is live tonight to help walk us through that video. Now, Sean, we understand this was somebody in crisis. That very well could be the family of this 18-year-old who was inside the house at the time of the officer-involved shooting. They met with Warren police here today. They wanted to see the video for themselves and say this may have been a mental health crisis, but it's the first time they've seen any of this behavior from their 18-year-old. Meantime, this family's from Bangladesh, and members of the Bangladesh community, they met. There's lots of rumors flying, and they say releasing this video you're about to see was very helpful to understand what happened and why. <laughs> Warren police body camera video showing Warren police officers using lethal force on an 18 year old. It happened Friday afternoon. <laughs> Let's back up to explain how we got here. A call to 911 from a minor inside a home saying his 18 year old brother was attacking everyone inside the home. The family believed it was a mental health crisis and say he's never acted with violence before. Our brother is going crazy. Okay, what's going on? He didn't see for four days. He's just fucking everybody. Warren police rush to the home to help that family. Watch what happens when they arrive. The garage door goes up. <laughs> the teen with a 9 millimeter handgun comes out. Oh, the teen was shot, the entire encounter taking just seven seconds. Shots fired, shots fired, give me an ambulance. Do not move! The family of the teen is from Bangladesh. Members of the Bangladesh community were at today's Warren police briefing asking questions. Could you, could officer unarm him without shooting? No. Once the individual pointed a firearm at officers, uh, our officers took appropriate uh, a level of force to defend themselves. Back here live. Now, the family members had no idea that the teen had a 9 millimeter handgun, a gun in the house at all. Police found that the 18-year-old legally purchased that handgun from a private seller. In the meantime, uh, those officers, now they remain on administrative leave. That is the policy while the shooting is being investigated. And that's the scene here in Warren tonight. Sean Lake, Local 4, back to you. No, oh, Sean, thank you. Well, in Detroit and other major cities today, some huge traffic disruptions as part of a coordinated protest over what's happening in Gaza. Detroit police stopped this caravan of cars that slowly made its way down Michigan Avenue. This was right at the Michigan Central Train Depot there. Police questioned drivers and after a short time, let them go. That was not the case in other parts of the country. Both directions of the Golden Gate Bridge shut down for hours today. Demonstrators locked themselves together, blocking traffic. In Chicago, the entrance to the O'Hare Airport was blocked. 
Law enforcement officials say several arrests have been made. As of right now, the Golden Gate Bridge is back open and traffic is flowing. Meanwhile, the White House and the world are waiting and watching for Israel's decision on whether to retaliate against Iran after it launched a barrage of missiles toward Israel Saturday night. Against the backdrop of soaring Middle East tensions, President Biden hosting the Iraqi prime minister today and directly addressing this weekend's unprecedented Iranian war strikes against Israel. Together with our partners, we defeated that attack. The U.S. joined Israel and other allies in successfully shooting down nearly all the 300 plus missiles and drones launched. No one was killed and damage was limited in attacks that Iran called retaliation for a strike on the Iranian embassy compound in Syria. Iran says it's over unless Israel fires back. Strength and wisdom need to be the same sides, the different sides of the same coin. The Biden administration is urging restraint. Uh, we're not looking for a war with Iran. We're not looking to broaden and deepen this conflict in the region. In major cities this morning, Israelis appeared back to normal, but the Israeli war cabinet is still weighing its options and signaling it could retaliate soon. President Biden told Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu that although the U.S. is committed to Israel's defense, U.S. forces will not participate in any counteroffensive against Iran. That, according to a senior administration official, the president seeking to stave off a wider regional conflict as war rages on in Gaza. We're committed to a ceasefire that will bring the hostages home and preventing conflict from spreading beyond what it already has. He's urging Congress to act on national security funding for Israel and Ukraine.